We don't love this. I have to do evaluations on John, John, and John. <laughs> That's going to be hard. John's well, you can just do John one. Pico I know. <laughs> okay, here we are. This is the work session for the commissioners, Tuesday, January 7th, 2020. Welcome, everybody. Um, uh, and we're going to jump right into it here, uh, upcoming regular meeting items. The first thing up is the county manager and county attorney evaluation process. Phyllis is here. Hi there. And you have Phyllis. a guest. Phyllis Matthijs, <laughs> deputy county manager. Melissa Knight, deputy director of HR. And John is quivering in his... <laughs> <laughs> I've accepted my fate. <laughs> John's favorite time of the year. Um, By the way, John, we got those Christmas presents. Oh, good, good. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> um, this year we've actually teed this up in enough time that we can have John and John's, um, John Peacock, John Ely's evaluation done at the same window of time that all employees have their evaluations, which is what we've been striving for for years. I've been here, I think, 14 years, and I've been working on that. So it's been a slow coming, but well I, done. I feel us. like oh, <laughs> I finally of the new decade. Don't <laughs> rush into this. I finally got over the hump. Um, so what we wanted to do, this will be the second year for using the TrackStar software. Uh, Melissa yesterday sent out the uh, email invite um, for you to be able to um, provide feedback which was I, according to my schedule, and I put the Monday's date, and I really wanted to put the Tuesday's date, but it's the beginning of the year and still working on that, so that you can confirm all the people that you want to have participate in this evaluation. John Peacock has always asked for all of the E-team, which is all the directors of all the divisions in the county. Um, so it's not just his direct reports. It'll also be my direct reports and Rich's direct reports and who we function with as an executive team. So that's, um, that's the one group. And in the past, we've always used that same group for John Ely. And then uh, we also do the department staff as a second group. So um, included in John is Jeanette and Charlotte and Elaine um, and Pat Bingham. In Ely, it's the attorneys and the paralegals. So that's kind of the group. So we thought we would go through just quickly TrackStar and give you a look at it again um, if you have questions along the way. Um, I did put a schedule in here so we'd come back to you. Um, so all five commissioners provide your individual input. It'll be loaded together. We'll come back in an executive session for you to talk about how the ratings go. And then um, we'd give you a packet of the final information after that. We finalize it, give you the packet, and then you meet with John and John on J February 4th. And all county evaluations need to be done by February 7th, so you'd be three days early. So can I, I got the email, <coughs> mm -hmm. and it said respond by January 3rd. I ignored that, mm -hmm. and I went ahead and did it. So mine is done. Well, I saw that. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. And we're actually asking for it to be done by January 17th. Well, I was way ahead of the so curve. So <laughs> you're, you're good. Thank you. Um, we actually find people either do it right away or they'll wait to the 16th or the 17th. That's kind of the way it goes. And then that will give us enough time that you would, um, on this, um, I think it's the 18th, or maybe we, <coughs> excuse me, we'd have enough time to give you the uh all the feedback in a packet for your exec the following Tuesday. So you'd have the packet on that Friday. I gotta go get some water, excuse me. I'm gonna leave it for you. <laughs> <Sorry>. <coughs> um, and just so you know, I know that there was some feedback from last year throughout the process, so I did go back and review all that and take it into account. So I think this year the process will be a little bit more streamlined um, with you all only getting one packet in terms of everyone's feedback. So the, you know whoever chooses from the E-team, from John's team, from Ely's team, and then all of you will be all together um, in one packet in terms of your feedback. And then um, at, at the meeting, we could all decide what the final rating would be for John and John. 
um, <coughs> in terms of their overall score. So I think it'll be a little bit easier moving forward. And Patty, I spelled your name right this year too. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so you should have received an email already, and it did say January 3rd, and I think that was <laughs> built into the system already. I did type in a note, but I'm not sure that that went I through. Yeah. Was, that, so was it from you? I'm just looking for it here. It's, perf it's uh, Trackstar Performance Track Management Star, will you. be okay. the, um, who it's from. That's where, it, thank you. I think it's Performance Management Notification. I did it real quick. I didn't read comments. I just... So yeah, once you get that email, you'll click on a link, um, and essentially it'll take you right into TrackStar. You won't need any sort of login um, or anything along the way, and um, you will just go through, as we did last year, um, the review starts off with the six values of the organization, so you'll rate um, John and John on both of those, um, not effective all the way to exceptional. The nice thing with... Um, the way it was set up this year is you could do NA. So just in case you really don't work with John or John in that capacity, I mean, it's a little bit different for you all, but if somebody else didn't work with John and John in that capacity, they could choose NA, and then it won't go into the overall weighting of the ratings um, for either of them. You can add comments, but you don't have to. And then as you go down, um, it'll be the same across the board. And you'll get to the bottom, and I won't actually do this, so my information won't go in. Oops. Um, there will be an overall comment section if you do want to, um, summary comments, if you do want to put in just a general comment on anything um, or thought or feedback, um, acknowledgement, whatever the case may be, so that way at least it's tracked um, in John's permanent records in his personnel file. So I think it's pretty self-explanatory. If anybody has questions, you're more than welcome to contact me or I could help you through it um, at any point. Um, and then the only thing that you will have to do is once um, you do complete all of the values and the competencies, this button here will light up, send to manager, um, and it will send it to the BOCC group um, which is basically John and John's manager, but it really doesn't go anywhere because there's nothing tied to that. It's just more of a system, system thing. And then I will get you all the information. Just to be clear, the sent to manager is sending to the, sending to the program manager. Yes. Mm -hmm. well, I, I hesitate. I'm like county manager. Yeah, county manager. I got too much time here. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. And if we want to. Um, go in and update how would we does it have to be done in one sitting or can we do it over time so you could do it over time like if you wanted to do the values one day and then you had to run it the system will save everything for you okay mm -hmm. but once you do send to manager you won't be able to get it back okay thank you to make any changes i'd have to and I, i'd have to restart the whole process for you okay which could be done but <laughs> Yeah, because there's a little thing that says saving while it's happening. Yeah. I, I noticed that when I, every time I finish something. So you could complete the whole thing, and if you wanted to come back another day I, and, and Well, then I read did. It. I went back and changed something when I... Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. It was actually really easy to do. Mm -hmm. And I decided just to keep my comments to when we are sitting together and having a discussion. But Any questions? Other questions? No. And then when this is completed, this is the form. This will be the document that you'll have the, the discussion with John and John. So we've now kind of, we've automated the whole thing. <laughs> and Great. you learned from last year. So, so, we'll, <laughs> so we'll, we'll fill it out. And if we have questions, Melissa, you'll, we'll, you'll be our point person. Yes. And I, I promise to do my best not to come and bother you when I can. <laughs> <laughs> So you don't even have to get to get you right in. It's really easy. Good, thank you. <laughs> so what I did provide you in the packet was the list of the rating categories. <coughs> They're there on the right-hand column. But uh, if you wanted a, um, a reference while you're going through it and wanted to re remember where they are, this is where they, um, how they line up, as well as the definitions of the overall rankings. That brings up a good point, too. Just so you know, um, the definitions of the actual competencies or values are right here under the bold. So this is how the county describes initiative. 
and then if you actually click on one of the ratings, it will give you the actual definition for that competency or value. So, um, and then you could just sort of toggle back and forth. Um, and you know, it saves every single like nano computer nanosecond. So um, you won't lose your work as you kind of go down through the process. Perfect. Um, if you do add comments, you need to save your comment. But it tells you if you didn't save your comment, it says you didn't save your comment. So yeah, it, it pretty well pretty walks, walks you through, through the it. whole process. Steve, on the on here you have not effective, minimally, so on. On this track star overall rating thing, you have mm -hmm. leading performance, strong performance, a, a totally different system than these words. Um, mm -hmm. If you look right here on the screen, the bottom, it says overall score, strong performance. Um, so that's, those ratings are the overall. So the calculated weighting of all the, uh, all the ratings give you these summary overall performance ratings. So it's not the rating for the individual competencies. Mm -hmm. It's the overall performance rating. <coughs> that's why they're, they're, revers they're, they're different. So it kind of takes the score of all the effective, not effective kind of things, and then mm -hmm. puts it into a different definition based on these definitions right. here. Mm -hmm. yeah. okay. It takes the rankings. So you can be extremely, I forget what the words are. Exceptional. Uh, <laughs> exceptional <laughs> in one and not effective, and based on how many of each, they'll, they'll equate out into mm -hmm. one of these overall ratings. Well, after we've all gone through this, we're, I'm going to guess we're going to have comments or questions or suggestions on how it can be tweaked or improved or you know for, for questions that weren't answered um, is there a, any category within track star where we could make a suggestion about the, the, the survey itself just to keep improving it um, that may be better off in one of the meetings because this is the, um, the process for the organization across the board in terms of what the AIM team has come up with, but we could definitely talk about if there's something one-offs that you want to do with the county manager and the county attorney in the future. Right. Absolutely. I don't have anything in particular, just wondering yeah. if, if the feedback extends right. to the, mm -hmm. you know, because I can imagine going through this and saying, well, they didn't ask me, you know. <laughs> yeah, and if it would help to put it in here, that's fine, but it'll also go into their permanent record, <laughs> so it may be, <laughs> which has nothing to do with John. You could blame me for track stores, so. Right. Um, yeah. Okay. Great, thank you. But that is how we made some changes from last year to this year. We right. found um, just when you go through the process, it's exactly how it works. You know, you know if we did it this way, um, which we do have a shortened time frame. We've eliminated one meeting because I think now from using it last year, um, it's a little more self-explanatory as you go through it. Um, so we felt we didn't need that extra meeting to go through it. I think if everyone puts their ratings in, we come back together. Um, you review all your ratings that will be in there. So the document that you will receive will have that in there um, electronically. Mm -hmm. Will it be print-wise or no? Yeah, I, I can print it for everybody, yep, in PDF. <laughs> um, so then uh, the conversation will be, you know, if we have five different ratings, what will the rating really be? So that's mm -hmm. going to be the, the conversation that we come back to. Got it. Great. Excellent. Thank you. Well, this is, this is great. It looks like a, an efficient way to move forward with this mm -hmm. and and then we will have our recommend our recommend recommended actions from last year you know we do that whole so we'll have copies of that so we can because remember we always go okay this is what was achieved two years ago last year this is what we'd like to see achieved this year and then we can put it into our summary that we give to John and John we'll include in your packet with the the final results from this the evaluation from last year so you'll have that as a reference document um, also, the, the ratings, the overall ratings equate to a um, bonus system that the county has, so we'll, at that time we'll be able to discuss that. And does our summary from last year also then include the year before that, the goals that were achieved? Because we, we kind of look at that time frame. The goals are in that last okay. document. Um, the goals that you set last year for this year's performance are in, will be in the document. Along so with the are, are you looking before. for 2000? So 2019 goals are in. Yeah, there, but, but we like to look at the year back to like 2018. 2018 goals are in the 2019 summary. performance appraisal. Oh, and they can access that. From so that will give them as a past document. Oh, sorry. So, no, that's what I thought. So, so you will have, have that last year. year. 
because we By like giving you last year's we like to say we asked you to do this in 1999 and i'm not going back more than one year though <laughs> <laughs> because last year was the first time we used this system when you built right. um so that was really a transition time from when we were doing um, a survey using mountain states um, so now we're using this so Actually, there's no cost to this. There was a cost when we were using Mountain States, asking some of the similar questions. Um, and that's the one we sent to the EE team. Okay. okay. Looking forward to it. So you have an email that says an invite to okay. it. It has the link. Melissa <coughs> is the expert in making it work. So questions can go to her. She's available. Um. I just want to make sure I can log into this. Do I need my county password? No, it no. just click. You just okay. click on it. It takes you right to it. Okay, all right, that's all I need. Yes, to no password. <laughs> <laughs> that's why I was able to do it so quickly. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I figured I'd better do it while I could, right? <laughs> um, all right. If that's it, we'll okay. keep moving. Thanks. We're quick. Thanks, then. Melissa. Thanks, thanks, thanks for coming ladies. down. Great sure. to see you. Good luck evaluating 300 plus. Yeah, really. Thank you. We're we're getting there. <laughs> Um, and the self-appraisals are in, so that's the start. So you also get that information. Mm -hmm. So self-appraisals from both. On the same, in the same thing. And yep. using the same um, piece. So when you go in, you'll know how they rated themselves. We always like looking at that part. Oh. <laughs> Thank you. I have one question. On, uh, not, uh, not on this topic, but I just realized I, there, on the way I look at my our packets online, nothing was posted. Is that, is it, was it posted inside the, I, I just go to the public the public page for the Picking County, and there's no packet posted. And I know there's some information. Not everything is here today, but I don't. It's I'm not seeing it on my on the website. Oh. Just thought I'd mention that. I will go. Well, it's on our. Yeah, it's on our revised agenda. Check that Events out, agendas. Uh, it's definitely. I have it in board view. Yeah, yeah. it would be in board view, but it's just not on the public <coughs> website. In case anybody wondered. Okay. Um, all right. That's so it. So we did have a packet that was this, because this is. This piece is public, the process. Yep. From here, we'll be in the exec section. Great. Okay. Thank Thanks, you. Thanks, everybody. Thanks Thank a lot. Thank you. Yeah. Sorry for my, well, no. it's whatever it, it, we it's, have. It's kind of like oh, a movie star voice. It. I like it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, she's so smoker. sultry. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Could you do an answering <laughs> machine message for me? <laughs> okay. Uh, BOCC retreat prep up next. Yeah, Here thanks, we go. Greg. And, and really, we, I just set aside some time so that we could have a, a conversation to make sure as we're preparing the, the agenda for uh, the board retreat that we're aligned with what you guys want to do. And so we've set aside uh, January 29th and 30th. Um, as you all are aware, annually, uh, we, we set aside time for the board to um, kind of get outside of its regular meeting structure to have um, more both in-depth discussions as necessary or our far-looking discussions. We tend to kind of focus on topic, 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 um, and this kind of gives you an opportunity to, to step back and maybe get at the 30,000-foot level in terms of um, what our priorities are. There are a couple of things um, that, that I was going to recommend. Uh, maybe I'll just uh, talk about those uh, at, at the beginning and, and you guys can start to edit ideas or, or introduce your own. Um, one of the things that uh, I think over this past year has become clear to me is that we've been working on multi-year priorities um, for quite a while, and we're still in the middle of some of those. Um, but there's also a lot of energy, I, I think, from the board and community and, and what have you on potentially uh, new priorities. And I think we need to have an opportunity both to understand what those new um, priorities might be um, for the board, where our energy is going now, <laughs> what's the delta between those two? What's the difference between, you know, gosh, we, we're seeing needs over here, but we're spending our energy over here so that we can kind of plan um, together and be aligned as staff and, and the elected body and such as far as, as where we're spending our energy. 
to that end, um, what I would propose is building an agenda around a few different types of exercises, if you will, for us during the retreat. Um, one is uh, exercise we've done every year, but I think it's always valuable to, to really start off by looking at the past year and kind of doing that plus delta. What went well? What would we change uh, if we could? Just so we have an understanding where each of the board members um, is, is kind of, you know, feeling about where the organization is and, and um, where we had some wins and where we had some challenges that, that we can pay attention to. I would then suggest that um, <clears throat> we do an exercise, and I, I'm going to call this kind of an individual legacy exercise. I don't know if that's a, a good one, but it's really um, getting an understanding so that you can hear from each other and staff can hear from you as an elected official. What is the legacy that you hope to, to leave? And it might be an exercise like, um, the, the day after your last day in office, whatever that is, um, and you're reading the newspaper, <laughs> what do you hope it says about your time in, in office? What, what do you hope it says that you uh, accomplished or that the board accomplished or that the county accomplished um, with your leadership? Um, I think it would be interesting for you guys both to hear each other's Kind of, and that's just an example, but it's a way of kind of understanding what um, your major priorities are. Why did you do this? Um, we can then, um, following that individual legacy discussion, what I'd suggest is this, this is the bureaucratic side, kind of a state of a, the county report. Where are we at in departments with major initiatives right now? Um, you know, what is um, a, a rundown of those initiatives, their, their current status, the original and ongoing justification for us putting our, our energies there, what we see as the timeline for completion when resources will, will be freed up, um, and, and what those resource commitments are. That can then lead to a discussion about, okay, well, where where are we putting our energies now? Where did where's the legacy kind of discussion? What's the gap between those? That then opens up an opportunity for us to start planning and prioritizing um, either what we're doing now. Is there stuff we need to stop in order to do something new? Um, if there's legacy pieces, do we just need to start anticipating those for future priorities and? what might be the timelines for those so that we can all get on the same page about what success looks like and what our roadmap is to get there over the next few years. Does that make sense? That would be a series of, of exercises um, that could either be done over one or one and a half days. Um, there are some things that we've done in the past that have been popular with the board, doing panel discussions and such. I'd love to get your feedback on whether that plays in or whether this is even along the lines of how you guys would like to spend your time. But I thought I should put some ideas out there uh, Great. initially. And thanks, John. George? Um, a couple of, well, at least the one question and some Hi. comments. Mike? Sorry. Hey, Tom. Uh, state, state of the departments, does, are you anticipating having staff come in and, and, and do that? or? I, we're, we're trying to put a matrix together um, for you guys. Um, we could have department. It, it really, that's some of the feedback I think I need, George. We could have department heads roll in for a day, <laughs> and um, you guys would have an opportunity to, to interact more directly and, and question. We used to do that, yeah, um, I'm not and we kind of moved away, yeah. away from that. Yeah. So. I think we could do it either way. We yeah. could either develop kind of a matrix and, and we could update uh, through me and, and probably Rich and, and Phyllis, um, or we could have department heads roll in. So. Yeah, I'm not suggesting have, I'm, I'm to the line, Steve, uh, having department heads on there. I think for me, I, I get a lot of that information and feedback and interaction during the budget process. Exactly. 
Um, I, I like I, I like sort of where you're going. I, I go back to um, what we talked about oh, months ago, six months ago, what Kelly brought up in terms of the topic of growth. And I think uh, the Delta exercise and perhaps this legacy exercise is a good, would be a good introduction into the topic of growth uh, and um, in terms of how we're utilizing our resources currently and, and what, what our future looks like. Because I think retreats are always valuable in terms of uh, looking forward instead of looking backwards. You know, you look backwards in terms of what you've been able to accomplish, but then you're looking forward in terms of what are the challenges and the goals uh, moving ahead. And so I thought about this, and I thought that um, if we if we utilize the um, the topic as overall growth, and, and that that provides lots of different opportunities in terms of discussions. What 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 does growth mean? Um, and and I think we could have. Uh, a good discussion with maybe two or three panel members uh, to help uh, provide that discussion. Uh, and I've got some ideas on that if, 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 the, if the board likes that direction, so. Great, thanks George. Do you wanna elaborate on that or you wanna? Yeah. I, I think it sounds great. But. Well, you know, if we're if dealing with growth and, and in terms of where we've been from a county perspective and where we're going, certainly with a panel, I, I would, I would and I would think we'd want to have Cindy and Ellen there, and then I think we'd want to have an outside perspective, someone who, who not only has worked in, the, in this community but has worked in many other communities, someone uh, like a Richard Shaw from Design Workshop, and uh, there may be one other person there, and I think that would be a valuable uh, perspective. Um, we did en engage Gabe Preston, I was gonna um, say Gabe. both. Uh, through ComDev and then our airport process to really analyze growth, so he may be an interesting. Yeah, I, I, I wouldn't want to get st uh, stuck on the airport because that would be premature, obviously. Not, but not but airport. Overall, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, he he looked at the context of growth uh, in VRBOs, population, building permits. Uh, I, I think all of those kinds of questions about what is growth? Is it the intensity of use? Is it population? Is it, what is it? Right, and then it becomes more of a philosophical <coughs> discussion in, in terms of how we, uh, how we pro yeah. provide direction to staff in terms of um, land use policies. Um, Kelly? I have a question, John. So some of the distinction I'm seeing, seeing from George's comments versus what you've offered up for us is, um, is a little bit of George is honing in on what we've kind of said. We have a topic that we're interested in, and I'm wondering, do you need, do you need from us like a, an affirmation of what we as a board see our priorities to be? Because those are much like what you presented is very general, and I think, you know, I feel like I have a pretty good understanding of maybe what ours are, but we just per perhaps have to shore that up a little bit as an initial point, and then spend time in the content of what those are. But what is, what is the gap that you need as far as are our priorities lining up with what our past priorities have been and what staff sees their priorities are? Yeah, I think, I think uh, so your first point is kind of where, where I was going that I think um, we, I, I think as staff we're grasping a little bit now um, because we're, we're hearing a lot of new priorities come up and you know examples and not bad it's just we don't have it in the context yet so whether it be um, child care growth um, transportation um, housing mental health th there there are a lot of pieces out there that uh, some of which we have initiatives around some of which we don't have initiatives around uh, the, the declaration of a, a climate, um, you know, a, emergency, I'm not sure we're aligned um, well with the board's kind of expectations around that. And so that's why I wanted to try and capture, I think to your point, a little bit big picture, make sure we're all on the, the same page what those were. And we could probably do that in a day one kind of exercise. And if you wanted to choose a specific kind of topic that we could hone in on and if we already know what it is as a body that'd be good but I think it would be because we keep having these kind of conversations that as staff I'm not sure we know exactly 
that mm -hmm. were aligned with the board's expectations. Does that does yeah. that make sense? No, that's, so that's great. I that's why I was suggesting big picture and to understand that. But if we have two days, I, I think it can be a yes and uh, discussion. Mm -hmm. We're just not going to be able to go deep on a lot of issues. Sure. We'd have to choose. I think to to George's point choose one and growth has been one that that we've talked about and we could choose that for like a day two kind of deeper dive understanding that some of the other priorities that we agree on will will be future discussions yeah sure okay uh, yeah i was thinking timing wise though um i don't know if we could do this on day one um would be to have that first discussion as to where we've been where we want to go and what we're thinking but i think a, i think a, a generalized topic of growth covers all of the things you just said because with growth we have more mental health issues we have more child care issues we have more transportation issues we have more housing issues it kind of all comes under that umbrella and when you were when George was bringing up names Gabe popped right into my brain because I've worked with him for so many years and he has a great understanding not just of this mountain community but of many mountain communities and I think that would be beneficial for us and then um, I'd love to have a panel discussion and I think it would be great if we could have it at the end of day one and then we could spend day two because we never really had a chance to really digest our panel discussions in a meaningful manner just because of timing. And then we could spend day two digesting that and coming up with the plan to move forward for 2020, 21, beyond. I appreciate that. I like the idea of actionable items even. Yeah, you know, we could again. get that first morning discussion where we could hone in on where we individually or as a board want to go. Um, and then I would really, I think it'd be very beneficial to have Cindy there. You know, George mentioned uh, Dave, Dave Shaw from Richard the Dave. Shaw. Uh, Richard, Richard Shaw. Shaw. Um, and Gabe would be, I think, a great combination just right off the top. I mean, there may be some other m names mentioned, but um, to do that day one and then day two, give us time to really digest day one in a more meaningful manner and then create the plan by the end of day two to where we want to go. That, that, I think that would be, I think the panel discussions have been great in the past. Comments? Just a thought. Yeah, I, I'm just hearing um, two different objectives, and I think, I don't, I think a retreat can hold both of them, but we want our time to spend together to talk, dive a little bit into a topic, and staff needs us to lay out a plan, <laughs> you know, right. and with some clarity, um, so if, if we can hold that in both days then I think that's great well, I think giving us day two for just us to sit down and vet and digest you know what we've what we heard day one especially with some input from a panel um, would give us that whole day to really get into the nitty-gritties I think it'd be beneficial the other opportunities uh, which we've done in the past is we've identified perhaps a half a dozen key uh, issues and then we've been able to revisit them during work sessions yeah mm -hmm. exactly so just That'd be great. so it doesn't all have to be done at once right yeah. so but identifying them <coughs> looking at sort of a bigger picture and then coming back to uh, mm -hmm. to be able to help staff uh, mm -hmm. develop a work plan on specific uh, mm -hmm. critical issues and and even having it identified that we haven't nailed down the work that that we've identified a priority but we don't necessarily have it nailed down how we're approaching it help staff because then it, you know we sure. know that we're waiting for that that conversation I just I think we need to be um, you know deliberate about that follow-up work because that was something I just saw that as a gap from last year's retreat as we didn't have kind of those deliberate strategic detailed questions about the priorities that we identified um, so if that's an that's deliverable for the two days segue. And, I may come back to that. and I'll uh, you know just <coughs> as a segue there to uh, um, in past retreats I've actually done quite a bit of the facilitating I'm going to recommend that that not be the case <laughs> this year you know, I was looking at bringing in somebody like uh, Stephanie Zaza who did the EOTC retreat I thought she did a good job of kind of boiling down to those more specific mm -hmm. action um, kind of steps. And she then, took a lot of information and yeah, helped us focus. That's and then sure. we can, uh, I can focus a little bit more on participating with you guys uh, in, in the conversation and being present that way, which I can't do when I'm facilitating. Sure. Right. Awesome. I saw an article that talked about how effective leaders need to do good reflection mm -hmm. on a periodic 
periodically and it was talking more about individuals doing just in their own private lives but I think we as a whole board this is our chance to do our reflection for the whole year and really put some thought into it and then we try to carry that reflection all through the whole year as we working on the different initiatives um, I like the idea of putting the getting the issues out there on day one through the panel discussion our individual legacy lists and uh, where the, the state the state of the county I like to have you do the state of the county and not have the individual staff members come in because we can always if, if there are things we need to dig in deeper we can do that later in the year in in work sessions on day two then is after sleeping on all we have the first day then that's when we need to kind of consolidate the stuff we thought about the day before and focus in on what we want to do for the coming year um, and so the, I think that would be a good process to follow. Time and food. <laughs> we, yeah. we already, uh, because we've been successful and wanted to get in early, we, we went ahead and uh, reserved the, the Meadows um, the location, Cato. the boardroom, the Cato room, yeah. I, I think that's been a good location for us the past few years. And time and Anticipating the same. that we weren't going to expand <laughs> the circle, but we could always move downstairs if that were the case um, I I appreciate what everyone has said this has been this is great um, the idea of having uh, I like the idea maybe per cap, perhaps because it's it's my own my own uh, um, feeling of insecurity at times that I'm not prepared enough advance prep for the retreat for everyone you know even if it's an assignment you know some special uh, a specialty or something so that we are prepared to you know to report when we get there I, I, I love that I think the board should be um, prepared to you know, to get to dig in deeper and and we all do that but I think that should be part of this so some advanced prep beforehand before this retreat will make it richer for all of us um, the thing that popped out for me I like I like what you've come up with I think the suggestions are all good I really appreciated what Kelly just said about uh, you know, an action plan at the end of every meeting to me would be really an important thing. I, 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 my biggest complaint about all the meetings we go to is often as soon as the meeting's over, the energy dissipates, whether it's a conference or a meeting of minds on some topic, the energy dissipates and nothing ever comes of it. You know, as much as, as fun and great as it was to be at the conference, what actually comes out of it? So I love the idea of having reporting, a, an action plan, associated with this um, and one of the th one of the things that um, uh, my, from my perspective I think would be important after my year now as the chair and kind of feeling comfortable as a commissioner now after was it year three um, uh, I'd love to look at and talk to you all about board communications structure are we doing this well I know George has been here Patty's been here a long time you guys I'd love to hear your perspectives on how boards communicate, how our board has communicated compared to previous boards. And, and how we what, should not communicate. <laughs> what works and what doesn't. I'd really love yeah. to have a conversation about that. What could we be doing, what could I personally be doing to make this better? Um, uh, I, early on, I don't know, a year or so ago, I, I handed out copies of a book called Measure What Matters, and it's about objectives and key results and and there it's being used now in comp in building companies as well as government you know how do you how do you create a an efficient operating team of people to, to get things done and how do you how do you track that and I don't not think I, I don't think I'm particularly good at it but I aspire to be and and so you know, I don't know if we need to review that book but I can I'll give you all copies if we need to do that again but uh, uh, but I'd like to have a conversation about that. You know, is there a, t a technique, something we can be using so that we are more effective, more, more efficient? Just a thought. Action items and, and reports. So we know if we've accomplished them, as, as Kelly points out. What, what, was, what happened at our last retreat that we finished and what happened that slipped through the cracks and which one are we stuck on? 
Well, thank you. I'm excited about this. I, I really look forward to these retreats. I could, really I could have more of them. Um, I know it takes a lot of time and effort on everyone's part, but it seems as if what I'm hearing from staff is that it'd be great if we were a little bit more uh, coordinated and the communication with staff is always there's always room for improvement right yeah and I, it, like this is this is just making sure we're aligned I, I don't think we're in a crisis piece but we had some <coughs> you know misses and in, in terms of follow-up and I think there's some confusion about are we doing the right things and in, in all areas so this is a perfect time for us to to get together and and get aligned and I didn't turn my mic on. Sorry, Amy. <laughs> <laughs> what were you saying? About I didn't say anything important. You were saying something about <laughs> the uh, Commissioner Tesla. That yeah, I right. Keep the red, red one. It, red it's one. just a, it's a good opportunity for for us to to get aligned, <laughs> and that's why we do this. And I think we've had so many multi-year priorities that there was a lot of alignment on, and there's new energy, and so we've got to take account of that. It's all good. Um, I started making a list last night of things that we've accomplished. I was thinking about climate, of course, which has been front and center for me lately. Uh, and the list is pretty impressive. The things that we're involved with, with our partners, with you know, Holy Cross, with RAFTA, with CORE, with all these organizations, we are actually moving the needle. Um, mm -hmm. And it's, it's something that uh, I'll, I'll bring back, but I want to make sure I don't leave anything out. But it's, we're actually doing some pretty amazing things that have been initiated in the last year or two. Mm -hmm. Um, and I think we need to take stock of that and, uh, and right. you know, appreciate that we're actually getting stuff done. Yeah, and on the other side of that, we have the list of things that have popped up this last year, which we've had a fair share right. of things that we don't want to skip over because those are things we need to attend to in 2020 um, that we're in the process of, but we need to really follow through on, such as the jail. Mm -hmm. We have some big right. issues Thank ahead you. of us. Yeah. But I think the retreats over all the years – my first retreat was horrendous. I would never go back to another retreat after that one. Um, <coughs> but I persevered, and I think they've just gotten better over the years. And um, I really appreciate the fact we're doing it so early. Mm -hmm. I think, I mean, why waste the time? Why waste the whole month? I mean, we're in January. We're doing it. That's huge. Sometimes we don't get to it till March, and then we've missed that amount of time. So I really do appreciate the time frame. So thank you, John, for moving us forward on that. Yep. And think how much better it will be with professional facilitation. <laughs> you, you do a good job. She did a really good job with a very complicated issue, so I have no doubt that she can keep us on track and keep us moving. I, for one, though, I have a hard time with the legacy thing. You know, I didn't jump into this to see what I would accomplish over the years. I jumped in to see what the county could accomplish. So, That's a fair So comment. I want to turn it yeah. into what has we of an organization been able to do okay. And um, what can we do as leaders of the organization to better that? So I, I think I've got enough direction for you guys to try and draft out uh, an agenda with Stephanie. I'll try and bring that back next right. week so you guys can see if uh, we understood it properly and we're going to be spending our time well. And um, it sounds like we need to start working on, on panelists now. It's yeah. going to be a little bit a of, of short notice for that, but that's okay. And your suggestions for individual board prep or board prep? You know, as we go into this, I'll bring that in uh, we'll next get the week. packet, but yep. I, I'm, I'm, I'm looking forward You're to seeing that. Okay. <laughs> Just for Greg. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Look here it goes. I, I invited you, this. You know I always have background reading for you guys. It's whether you do it or not. Well, you guys have packets? <laughs> oh, is that what's on the yeah. website? <laughs> Just make sure Greg gets to the packet this year. <laughs> oh, I was wondering what you're, all that reading you guys have been doing. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um, thank you. Ah, thank you for that. You know, John. Also, I just wanted to say I, I've been you're you're a, a reputable facilitator, and I yeah. I hear oh, about you. things you've facilitated in other places, other communities for other, and so we know you're good at this. But <laughs> as we also know, familiarity breeds contempt, <laughs> and that you know having somebody new come in so you can actually participate it makes great sense. Thank you. Greg. We I like having you that. sit at the table with us. <laughs> Distance makes the heart grow fonder. Yeah. What did I mean to say? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Okay. Right, I'll, I'll, I'll think about that. <laughs> I'll, I'll retract that shortly. Okay. Um, uh, we're ahead of schedule here. Uh, are we ready to go into future agendas? Yeah. And <clears throat> actually, yeah, the, um, I don't have any new future agenda items for you during uh, open discussion. 
we will be talking about a, a legislative issue, uh, business licensing is, is coming up, and so there will be kind of a request for commissioners to, to testify, but we can, that's probably not a future agenda item. I just note for the board that, um, as is always the case, we kind of run a pattern where the fourth quarter is always really busy impact <laughs> as we try and get the year-end business done. And the first quarter is a little bit lighter, so enjoy it while you can, uh, would be my <laughs> advice. Nothing, there's nothing big coming <coughs> down the pike, right? I don't yeah, know. right. <laughs> <coughs> so um, on the January 14th work session, it says with the OST joint meeting, we have the executive session, then we have lunch break, OST will provide. It doesn't mention that we're doing a public meeting with OST board. I presume that we are, but it doesn't say that we are. Yeah, so, yeah, let me look at that because that, uh, that timing doesn't seem to work out. I, I don't know if they just have items they can cover over, over the lunch uh, for an hour, so we'll double check that. And on that note, um, mm -hmm. no, you go. Can I make a request? Okay. Um, I'd be curious as to a follow up to the, the OST and Healthy Rivers joint meeting that happened okay. last year, if there was an update on that work that they were trying to initiate. And we never heard back. I never even heard that they actually had it. <laughs> yeah, they did. So. They did have a joint meeting. Yeah. I have a few things. Patty? Um, on the 25th of February, <coughs> it's. Um, the North Star Management Plan uh, work session. Uh, I want to just make sure, I know staff will do a great job, but I want to make sure that we have noticed the people. Um, I, we've received a lot of comments. I want to make sure there's good public notice of that meeting, that work session, um, especially with the East of Aspen Caucus. And then um, on the 18th, the day after President's Day, I will be out of town. My mother is turning 95. So I've, I've been called. <laughs> so, but I will be back. I'll only miss the meeting on the 18th. I will be back on the 24th. So just Tuesday the 18th. I'll let Charlotte know too, John, if you would like. Thank you. Um, and I think that's the only thing that's come up. i got to step out and take this real quick. Questions, comments, George. <coughs> we have um, sort of a skeleton um, agenda set for the next couple of months, and I know that we'll be able to fill in spaces. So, what comes to mind is uh, certainly the airport discussions in February, probably starting in February, and um, because we'll need some lengthy uh, time allowed for those. And we may, we haven't scheduled those um, because the, the vision committee itself has kind of had a flexible um, right. schedule in terms of how they're going to get to their recommendations. But my sense is, George, we may want to even do a special meeting uh, uh, time for that so you can maybe set aside a, almost yeah. a full day. For, yeah, yeah. Uh, and, and then I did notice, um, I'll try to find this, that we pushed, pushed back our second reading on our energy ordinance i'm trying to I forget where i saw yeah that. it went to february i want to say february 12th i think yeah and the really the the reason for that was a logistics reason um where um we had a conflict with training for the community on the the new permitting system that that we couldn't move and and both brian and cindy felt like they needed to be part of that community process. So it was really a logistics decision. Oh, okay. Yeah. All right. Okay. Great. I have a couple things. Uh, yeah, go ahead. Okay. <laughs> um, and I, I guess I'm wondering, could we circle back with John Ely on um, impact fees? Um, he mentioned he would have that available. Did I miss that in here at all? Because I know you had asked that it would come forward. The, the After housing, the housing yeah. impact fees. Yeah. Right. right. Um, so maybe that's something we can get scheduled because he indicated that was ready yeah. for us. And then another suggestion that um, I would have for consideration is um, if we wanted to hear any water-related presentations, um, you know, I know April Long 
had been working on an update to the Roaring Fork watershed plan um, that I think they were finalizing. Um, so maybe we could hear on that topic. The Chris, there's a Crystal River restoration group that um, has been getting together, and maybe we can invite them to hear what they're putting together. And we'll be kicking off the basin implementation plan update. So just some ideas sort of related around water topics that might coalesce together um, in a time a early in the year. A report would be good. You know, she's, she's ready and, you know, preparing mm -hmm. to do a, a report on what's happening with Rowapa more in depth than the little comments I make. Yeah. That would be great. Are there, so we have the uh, April lawn coming out in Roaring Fork, Ro Rowapa, um, the Crystal River. Were there other ones? That watershed report. Uh, yeah, the Roaring Fork watershed. That could be with Roaring Fork Conservancy. They can decide who right. comes in. But yeah. That yeah, and then I can sort of tease out a little bit on uh, the update to the basin implementation plan, see if there's any value uh, you know touch base with I, th the I think river that's a great idea uh, on the on the rock we're up a topic i do know we've we've uh, at the last meeting we were approached by the the hydro power people at uh for root eye water and power we always kind of forget about the power plant out there which really helps the city uh with the predictions with climate change uh they're looking at reduced uh output from the power plant at root eye uh, there may be ways to optimize that to bring them back up and give us a more uh, reliable, you know, power source going forward. And and I think they'd probably love to talk to us as well, and we can discuss with with April uh, if it's appropriate to bring them in at the same time. Because mm -hmm. yeah, the, the power <coughs> plant's been working really well for quite a long time, uh, but it may be time to to change a few things based on the amount of water that's actually going to be able to flow out of there. Um. Yeah, and I'm happy to help organize yeah. that. All kinds of New Year's ideas. Cl yeah. <laughs> uh, certainly we'll be doing well, the climate action, carbon offset programs, things like that are going to come back. I, I'm cooking some things that I'll, I'll bring to you all as soon as I, I can. We do have Jody here, if, uh, if you guys are done with. Um, I guess, yes, yeah, seems to me Patty got her two bits in worth, so why don't, come on down, Jody. Thank you. Happy New Year. Happy New Year to you. <coughs> it's a nice jacket. Thank you. I, like I know, color, yeah. I always wear black. <laughs> Logo wear. <coughs> it's not very bureaucratic of you, Jody. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, welcome. I know on the East Coast that would never fly. <laughs> never have logo wearer in a color. It would all be black. <laughs> That's the new color this year. <laughs> all right, Jody. Okay, uh, Jody Smith, uh, Pigeon County Facilities uh, Director. And I am here today to present um, the. There we go. Maybe. Uh, to talk to you about the um, courthouse construction project that we have going on next door, uh, give you a quick update of um, what's going on. Um, we're also working on the jail project. I don't have any changes on that right now. We're on budget, on schedule, not a whole lot going on. So I didn't bring any presentation on that. And then we're really just, uh, in the process of getting um, geared up for the other um, small construction projects this year um, for the 2020 um, schedule. So this is pretty much our, uh, the big, the big project so far. Wow, um, take a deep breath, take a, a breath, take a I know. <laughs> <laughs> off so, the construction um, program. So we're still in phase one, uh, building <coughs> exterior. I know you guys have seen the tent there. Uh, for a while, but um, the openings, all of the openings have been cut in phase one. And so what we're really showing you here is um, the lentils that were inserted. Uh, that's this first picture here. Um, make sure my mouse is, oops. So um, the lentils that have been installed, the cuts, you can see 
Um, the actual the openings um, that we've had to cut um, in each area of the building have gone really smooth, really smooth. And I have another picture in here uh, in a few minutes that you'll see. But um, so we're uh, just working on all that. The roof drains are all done. Uh, we've also extended some um, of our uh, fire damper piping or. Uh, Duct, and duct work up into the attic so we are uh, really cooking on that uh, again some of the exterior work here you've seen this opening in our uh, yard out here between the jail and the courthouse for some time now um, this is the prep for the footers for the um, exit stairway and they'll actually be pouring concrete if the weather allows on Monday um, to get that foundation in and then that will start to close up there well, the sun um, never shines back there, does it? I know. I know so it's always cold. I know. Those guys are out there shoveling <laughs> so, right now. <laughs> the weather will help. Um, I want to just to ask about the lintels on those entrances. Are those, those have been kind of textured like the original? It looks like that one's been, uh, it's not just a concrete. No, thing. the majority of them are the steel. Um, and then, of course, we saved the stone on that front one. You have the facade. Yeah. For so where they could, where they were um, saved. Don't look. Um, Not looking. Where we could reuse them, we did. And again, the structural engineers have been very involved in this to make sure we're, um, yeah, we're safe and that it's being done properly. So that will be poured. Um, this picture is a tiny bit blurry, but you, this is our third courtroom, so I'm going to show you a series of pictures on the interior. But this is standing in the doorway of the old patrol room, and you can see here on the very back corner there, um, this is, that's where the bench is for the judge. On the uh, right, right hand, or excuse me, left hand side is where the um, witness will go. And then where on the bottom of that screen is the jury box. And then <coughs> from the back is the, um, uh, the audience. Are, you are, it, are we looking at a railings and things that have been protected? It all looks so rough. It's like this has been covered, this is, protected, and closed. Yeah, this is just, um, so we've had to do some uh, metal railings, and then they're being uh, built, they'll be closed in, and they'll look like the railings. They'll be wood covered, just like the ones upstairs. So this is just really the pony walls and foundation for Got that. It. Okay. Um, uh, the wheelchair lift and shaft have actually been enclosed. Um, that's not in this area, but it's the front lift area. Um, yesterday they got that drywalled, and it significantly changed the construction noise in the building. So they were actually, and I'll show you a picture here um, in a minute, but they were um, they were actually grinding that stone, and it was so much better. Uh, again, the MEP, which is the mechanical, uh, electrical, and plumbing, um, all of the vertical return ducts have been from the garden level up. Um, we had some, we had a, a lot of finagling to do. You can see in that first picture that this ductwork had to come up through, this is the old assessor's front lobby, mm. and then that's the door behind it. So this door will no longer be used, which was our plan all along. But how all of that had to be finagled and brought in and to go all the way up was um, a challenge. Um, again, all along the way, we've been working with the district attorney, the probation office, um, the Ninth Judicial, and everybody's aware of these subtle changes, like that ductwork should have been really against the wall and as small as possible, but it, it just, it had to be further out. So they're all working around that, making sure their furniture will fit, and um, it's, it's good, you know, real heartburn. But we have had to modify a few corners of the building. And that, is that a duct? Sorry, in that mm -hmm. in the corner behind the guy holding the ladder. That's one of the ducts. Yeah. Back in there. Uh -huh. Okay. That's a duct that it went looks up. fairly small compared yeah. to the massive yeah, one. Well, there's big a few of them that duct. are big. We it's probably my number one biggest surprise was some of them are fairly large. 
you'll provide us with a map of all the ductwork so we'll know how to get in and out of the courthouse. <laughs> <laughs> You're not going to even notice. Where's anything? the secret tunnel that found well, the found surprises? I <laughs> like that. Isn't that great? So these were just found this week. So we really haven't uncovered any, any treasures yet until this week. And we found uh, that hammer there on the left is actually the head of it is split. And so I think it was for them to do um, the grout work. Um, so it's pretty cool. And then um, I don't know if those bigger, um, those big metal things are from like the chimney dampers or if it's from an old wheel or uh, old uh, piece of equipment, I don't know. But I was actually thinking about maybe creating like a shadow box and putting these in and hanging them in the courthouse somehow. Or, That'd be cool. Um, yeah, so we'll we'll keep them and figure out what to do. We just have to, to leave their them. rake in there. Yeah, you still have the signatures up on the in the attic walls, yes. right? Yeah. That it would be great to include that somehow when you. you know, yeah, yeah. The evidence of that. There. Yeah. So um, and then we found a new hook this morning, so that's now been added to the pile, and then I also thought this this kind of interesting. Uh, thing behind the wall was when they opened up the wall in the old assessor's office you can see there's some plumbing there in the middle picture but when you look at the mortar that was pushed through the screening the it just is pretty pretty neat yeah. so, and just wanted to be able to share some of the fun stuff we're seeing because it'll all be covered soon and yeah. you won't see it <laughs> uh, and everything's really still in progress, but these are um, three of the items that I kind of wanted to show you. You um, really already approved uh, the elevator cab upgrade, but I wanted to point out like that old fix for our ADA compliance will go away. Um, um, on the middle picture, on the right hand picture, the electrical wire and paneling cleanup throughout the building. I mentioned this a couple of times in our previous, but I wanted just to mention it again, is um, like this panel in the garden level actually runs several things on the second floor of the courthouse, or of the courtroom, and some equipment in the attic, and it's just a maze. And um, so we're taking this opportunity to get some of that cleaned up, and relabel our panels, and where we can uh, make sure all of our circuits like right now um, the district attorney's office and probation are flipping breakers like crazy because they're trying to run space heaters and microwaves and <laughs> coffee machines um, they're the only ones down there but again that kind of tells us uh, that these you know boxes need to be cleaned up so just kind of working on that um, and then the left hand picture this is something that we uncovered over the last couple of months um, we have some structural investigation going on here. You can see that pole in the middle, and it's not holding up that wall, but you can see that um, that uh, form up there. So what we found is that through the investigation, we went back in and looked at all of the <coughs> old plans, the floor plans that were on the hallways uh, as artwork. And we found that the... Um, the vault from upstairs um, that was in the, it was the old uh, sheriff's office investigation vault, that when the elevator was put in, that vault was moved over. And so, and then this, uh, in that ceiling there, they poured a, a concrete um, base for them to place that vault on that wall but it's kind of, we don't really know. So um, there's no drawings, there's no you know, specifications for us to go back on. So we've had our structural engineer taking a peek on that, see what, we just wanna really make sure that it's structural and that uh, we're doing the right thing there. So hopefully in the next two weeks, um, we will know what that is and um, if we have to do anything different with it or if we can cover it up. And this is the column, the, cent this, the silver column we're looking at, the, or the, which was, you think was put in to, to uh, mitigate the, the weight from the pad underneath the vault. Yeah, that silver column, that, that um, post wasn't there. That's something right. that That's we like put a, in, yeah. Oh, you so put there, that, okay. there used to be a wall there that okay. was dividing these two offices, but the wall was taken out, and we're like, hmm, what is that? Okay, got <laughs> so, it. 
and, and it just really goes to show how much um, FCI and our architects are really paying attention. Um, you're, you're undoing all the jury rigging that's been done over a hundred <laughs> and how many years? It has, this last probably six to eight weeks has been uh, uncovering several things for us, which is nice. Um, the uh, flooring, and I think I've sh showed this a little bit to you. Um, one of the discussion items that we're working on is because the cuts were so severe and um, it's uh, in here to put in this plumbing and run these lines, um, that we are actually looking at carpeting this down here. Um, it's going to be a hodgepodge of trying to match that tile, and um, it's no longer uh, a utilitary use. Um, it's going to be offices, um, jury rooms, um, break rooms, meeting rooms. So it ought to be qu quieter. Quieter. Yeah. It won't take as, and actually the maintenance will be a lot less on that. So. Um, we're we're working on that right now, but and it will soften it up and it'll flow upstairs too. But um, I just kind of wanted to show you how big these cuts were, uh, much more. And and you can see kind of on that uh, right hand picture, um, the tile has got some significant damage now too, where it's uh, chipping off and breaking. And then our radiant uh, baseboard heat replacement is moving along. Um, when we opened up the walls, we found that there were more damage than what we thought. So um, we're working forward on that. We're, uh, this is really going to improve building efficiency. We've had people complaining for years about no control. Being cold, we've provided space heaters to every office for years. Um, so we're going to be really create um, efficient maintenance, improve energy monitoring, cost tracking, and then um, uh, sizing these units for the spaces that they, if they were. I think, uh, again, kind of the hodgepodge of, of years. Um, you can see this, uh, the right-hand picture. That's actually a wall, and that heater goes through it. So the heater's on both <laughs> sides. And we've had that problem for years where, you know, the sheriff would be in one room and another person be in the other room and they could hear each other pretty clearly because of the opening that has to happen for that. Even though you think you're sealing it up, it's still fin tube opening. Sure. So we'll also create a better privacy for our, our uh, tenants in this, especially now given the amount of offices that this is creating. So, so uh, that's moving forward. Um, the courtroom uh, design and construction work. I kind of wanted just to give you a high level on this. Uh, you have already approved the bottom drawing, which is, so that's the county courtroom. I'm looking from the gallery towards the, where the judge comes in. And then that drawing kind of shows you that that whole bench witness and uh, court clerk will be um, kind of moved to the corner and then the uh, jury will be moved over um, to the other side by the windows. So that's already been approved. Part of the reasoning behind that, again, is that the detainees are now brought off of the elevator into, um, and they'll come through that door. And the way that it was currently set up is that the uh, detainees uh, would be coming through right behind the, the judge. <laughs> So, um, and then the district courtroom, you guys have a, had approved to do, um, uh, to recarpet both of these rooms, which we're moving forward on. And then uh, we did have in our permit set to rebuild that, uh, the district attorney's bench. Some of that is um, turning into a bigger discussion about compliance with the design that was approved. It was um, to take out the judge's bench but then it, it built a six inch platform and the uh, judge is not okay with a six inch platform. Right now he's got two feet. So that would have put him very much at the level of everybody else. And so we're kind of working on that with the city and um, ADA compliance and how all that's working. So there may be some, some slight changes to major changes on that. We've been in negotiation, not in negotiation, we've been in some preliminary design and 
Right now, uh, they wanted a big ramp to come through. So the ramp would come from the west side of the courthouse, the windows all the way up and then up and then onto the bench and uh, taking up a ton of floor space. So we're working on a, trying to do a provisional lift so that the provisional lift takes a much smaller and then we, um, it's a $10,000 piece of equipment that they can roll onto and pop up and go over. So if it's a wheelchair or even somebody on a, a cane or whatever for accessibility. So that's kind of just in progress. Um, so with that, um, knowing that we've had some unforeseen things and things that are coming up, um, we continue to seek um, grants. Um, we did, um, again, the DOLA grant was finally, it, we're under contract, so that is firmed up. Um, no change in the court security fund grants. Those were both awarded and were in progress. Uh, the core lighting grant was for the 20,000. So we'll be expanding, I think we're adding 19 more fixtures um, to get rid of the inefficient fixtures. So that, that's a bonus for our energy consumption reduction. And then um, core um, has, and I, I don't, I did get some uh, written communication from CORE yesterday that they are working on going to the board, the, the CORE board, to reallocate $75,000 that was awarded to a different county project to this project because it's been there for quite some time. And George might know more about that, but, um, but it looks like that that will be coming in to help us fund um, uh, some of the radiant heat stuff. And then I'm also applying <coughs> for a design grant today on that radiant heat to offset some of our costs. Um, we continue to look at our contingencies, we um, savings, any of that kind of stuff um, to, to make sure that we um, remain uh, fluid in our project. So any questions? Progress looks good. Yeah. Nice to see it. Yeah. Um, I have a question about the, the incident that happened with the nah. person trying to climb over the railing or whatever um, on the third floor outside the courtroom. Do you have any pictures of that or any, um, any updates on, are there any like structural changes that we're considering for that area? Yes, that's a super great question. and. Um, now that the inmates, uh, so the, the redesign is totally going to fix this as far as anyone that's uh, in custody. So they will be coming out of the jail, they're going into the east entrance of the courthouse as this picture shows. They go into a detention holding area and then that elevator will take them up right into the back area. So they will never be on those stairs, around those stairs. They're always going to be behind the scenes. There's no more uh, crossing with the public and witnesses. So that has been addressed in here. Okay. Yeah. Great. Yeah, it's a, it was timely. <laughs> but those railings are being raised to be compliant. Um, they're getting a, a metal railing on the outside, which is maybe two or three inches higher. Um, to make sure that we're in compliance, but. Okay, yeah. good, I'm glad to hear that. Yeah, yeah, so. Other questions? Well, okay. thanks, Jody. Good, See thanks, you next Jody. Month. Yeah, thanks. Thank you. Thank you. How, how long will that exterior tent be there, the tented front? We might just wait until surprise everybody someday. Yeah, let's, yeah. Wait, let's <laughs> wait like five years, six years. <laughs> it's Pet Patty from Chaining Herself. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> They hid it from me. I was actually out of town when they actually did the damage. I know. We did that on purpose, too. <laughs> Nobody, nobody's chained themselves to the courthouse in, in a couple Don't decades now. Be careful. We're on TV. You're giving people ideas. I was suggesting you. Oh, no, me, no. <laughs> so the doors and hardware are right. still coming. I wouldn't expect that to be opened up until June. Oh, really? Okay. Yeah. Wow. So phase one is going to go a little longer. Um, we're extending phase one. Um, but we're making up for some of phase two, like getting all that stuff up into the attic. So um, 
we we are a little off schedule at this point and um, but there's no there's it's not like there's any major reason to meet a deadline like we don't have renters or people coming in so um, I, I was just thinking just on the the tent that you see for Main Street yeah. um, at some point you know if the work stops in there and you're waiting for something and there's a way to clean it up or organize it just so it looks a little bit more formal be nice it, gets a, it looks like a construction project yeah. which which is what it is but maybe there's a way to uh, tuck it in or something sure I can ask him to Final do that. Final lilac motion. <laughs> yeah. I've, I've got an old Christmas tree I can give you. We can paint a board with a lilac on it. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Sure. Um, okay, where are we? So we're we're two open discussion, Greg, and I was going to maybe put off the two items that are listed below because I know Karen was going to try and come in to, to answer questions about the, the Board of Health, but I had a few other items not listed there for open discussion. The first will be an introduction when I invite Michaela Higgins uh, okay. to the table. Okay, there she is. Hello. So Michaela has joined us as our new best and brightest intern. So this is, uh, okay. um, of course, how we brought uh, Kara Silbernagel into the organization and yeah. Alex Sanchez, who's now in ComDev. And you are our third uh, best and brightest intern. Uh, Michaela's going to be working on legislative issues and uh, other special projects with, uh, with Karen. Tell us a little bit about yourself, maybe. Well, yeah. first of all, welcome. Yeah. Thank yeah. you. Yeah, it's I great to have nice you here. Nice to meet you this morning. Yeah, nice to meet you as well. Um, yeah, I look forward to working more in this area and with Pitkin County. Um, so through the Best and Brightest program, we are graduate students. So my graduate program is in political science. I'm really interested in local government and working in local government longer term. Uh, so this is kind of a, a dream job for me at the age of 23. So this is, yeah, very exciting for me. Great. We promise to keep you busy. Thank you. Yeah, <laughs> I like that. <laughs> at least well, until welcome. May. Thank you. Yeah, at least until May when the session oh. Don't be intimidated by us. Not you at know, all. I, we often come off <clears throat> as kind of, you know, aloof and, and we do. cruel. Speak for yourself. <laughs> mean streak, you know, that sort of well, thing. Well, I'll just, ask just a lot of questions, so uh, be prepared. She knows where to find us in that back corner. <laughs> exactly, exactly, yeah. Well, it's nice to meet you all. Nice, nice to, meet to meet you, and welcome. Thank you. Welcome aboard. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> So Karen is here, so maybe we'll jump to that, and I'll hit my other. You ready for so us? She doesn't have to wait. No. Yes. Sure. Um, you got to come on. Well, so ma'am. what did what did come up? Uh, you guys had had questions about the Board of Health alternates and where we're headed with those, and so if you could just talk through <coughs> that a little bit. And sure. We're going to be doing appointments and just tomorrow. Just quick questions. Do we? Oh, so we we would appoint. We'd vote um, on appointing Patty tomorrow, tomorrow. and then. Right. The other ones are coming from Snowmass, City of Aspen. Well, and I think there's questions about that. Sure. So, right. Yeah. yeah. Um, so we uh, we had um, written and rewritten the bylaws, and we had added a, a alternate for each of the elected positions as well as a general alternate for the at-large positions. And so when you all went through the election or the interview process for that the open at large position we had two great candidates and so the second candidate was appointed as the alternate um, so we have that filled uh, the city of aspen had requested that ann mullins um, act as the alternate um, when tori came on board so she is officially the alternate for the city of Aspen. And then we've talked about um, for the BOCC, Patty being the alternate for Greg. Um, the only piece that we have outstanding is with uh, Snowmass. And so I'm reaching out to Marky and Clint to um, determine who that alternate would be. So that's really the last um, the last position. Does that I think summarize did, everything? You guys had no, and board retreat is the 24th. Greg sent me that right great. away so I could book it, which was great. Thanks. Yeah. Um, Greg, and then um, I don't know where where are we doing it. <laughs> We're doing it at the pick at the library okay. in the community room from nine to three, okay. and we'll be sending out um, an agenda or draft agenda this week actually for it, and then a final agenda. So I, you'll get more information. I got you down. So there. Okay. And they'll Excellent. You're Great. offering Honestly. vegetarian lunch options. We are. <laughs> <laughs> we talked actually a lot about that, and um, 
we're really trying to follow the healthy meetings policy or guidelines, I should say, for the county. But then in light of really looking at um, how we can be sustainable for our health and the environment, we've been talking a lot about always having a um, vegan or vegetarian option at our um, functions so that we're giving people choices um, around both um, reducing our impact on the climate and helping our health. Thank you. Yeah. I just had my first Impossible Burger. Oh, and you? It was amazing. They're, they're good. really yeah, good. They are good. Amazing. Okay. See, I'm worried about how they make those. I, yeah. <laughs> we can have all. They make it after on that. 40, 400 million dollars in in testing. R and D, right? Wow. R and D. It was worth it. <laughs> okay. Uh, well, that's great. Thank you. Great, that's thanks. the update. That's sure. it, huh? Okay. All right. Looking forward to it. Thank you. All right, Nate. I'm going to get to my items eventually, but I see Phyllis here. Um, do you want to have the um, – or do you want to wait? Yeah. Okay. Thanks. I'll do two items then. I'm just going to come here so I can log on because I forgot my HDMA, HDMI cable. So um, you all may have – read this in the paper already um, but we have elected uh, through the airport to become part of the good traveler program and I just wanted to review that for just a second with you okay so um, <clears throat> Basically, the, the Good Traveler program was established in 2015, actually through San Diego Airport uh, in partnership with the Rocky Mountain Institute. And what it does is it provides a voluntary means for travelers to offset um, carbon that's produced from a plane trip. And so uh, in, in this case, um, Travelers would be going to the Good Traveler uh, website, and you have the option then, um, if you want to offset now, you can either do an estimate for domestic or international flight, or you can choose a departure airport. So as we have Aspen, uh, we just did a flight as a family to LAX in Los Angeles, and I'll calculate the offsets uh, for a flight. So it's 1,576 miles round trip. You need to buy two offsets, and each carbon offset is $2. So it adds an additional $4 per ticket for our trip. So we had three people. We'll offset the carbon for an additional $12. So. Um, it's a very easy site to use. Yeah, and the projects offered through the Good Traveler, uh, like I said, Rocky Mountain Institute is the uh, managing entity. Um, <coughs> they have identified um, a, a carbon offset verification company, Boonville Environmental Foundation, to identify certified carbon offsets that these funds would be invested in and a certified carbon offset then is a carbon offset that um, has been identified to truly either lock carbon uh, in, in a loop or to provide for alternative energy projects whether that be solar projects or, or what have you um, that, that are shown to um, basically um, a, a address uh, carbon, carbon impacts. Um, right now uh, at ASE, this is being introduced as a voluntary program. It's coming out of the conversations that we've been having with the community through our visioning process. There's a lot of interest in carbon offsets as a strategy to address some of the uh, greenhouse gas concerns about air travel into our community. So this is um, an, a, an initial step uh, into dipping our toes, if you will, into to certified uh, carbon offsets. Um, Rocky Mountain Institute, of course, is a well-known organization uh, to, to us here in the Valley, um, and, and we've enjoyed visiting with them about it. Um, the, we're going to be rolling out the Good Traveler program as part of our marketing uh, program for the airport for 2020, so really over the next few weeks, you'll start to see 
more advertising on websites. Um, when people log on to the Wi-Fi at the airport, they'll be automatically directed to this site um, to provide an opportunity for, for them to, to, to look at it um, and, and hopefully decide to, to offset their trip. Um, we'll also be um, longer term working with partner agencies, chambers, ski company, others. We'll be approaching them to also help us with marketing of the Good Traveler program. George? So um, how, do, how do we reach GA in this? Um, we'll have to probably work through, through our FBO right now and, and see if uh, – you know, they, they would be willing to be part of that marketing. Right now, we're focusing on, on the terminal and getting the program rolled out, and they would be one of the partners that we'd approach. Yeah, towards. because I, I see probably the greatest uh, need to offset carbon is, is from GA. You yeah. know, we got these huge jets coming in with carrying two or three people. Uh, but I don't know if the formula changes then or not in terms it of will. the load. Yeah. And my, my sense is it does change um, because the you know you, you tend to on a commercial flight you would be uh, looking at that land off taking takeoff cycle per passenger right. um, kind of like the difference between a bus and a single passenger right. vehicle right <clears throat> the miles per gallon are less on the bus but per person mm -hmm. much higher um, so. Um, We'll have to work with Rocky Mountain Institute. Right now, the, the program really is built around commercial. Yeah, um, yeah it, it's, it seems like it's backwards to me. Uh, it seems like GA should be a priority, but it'll be, it'll be as it is. My other question is, um, <coughs> the, uh, the dollars that are collected, are they going back into our community, or are they? I was gonna ask that. So um, they are looking for projects uh, that can be certified um, both in the state and preferably in the region that are visible. Right now there are none in Picking County. Um, there is potential for us as we've become a sponsor agency, so we get to sit at the table now when they're talking about uh, offsets. And so... For example, um, we're getting ready to do a feasibility study on uh, renewable energy and microgrids in the, at the airport and ABC area. Um, if that were a project that um, would qualify as a certified carbon offset, that could be a project that could receive funding through this program. Yeah, because I'm just curious, you know, um, <clears throat> when you think about core, uh, CORE is sort of is changing their philosophy in terms of uh, not focusing on reducing energy use, but now reducing carbon footprint. Mm -hmm. And so it seems like that would be a, a good um, outlet to try to figure out how to utilize uh, these dollars to offset carbon by <coughs> some of CORE's new programs. Yeah, so by joining this program, we now have a seat at the table to start to have those conversations where we didn't have it before. So. I've had conversations with Mona at CORE about this very topic in this program and with the idea that we're going to be looking for places where we can land offsets in, in the transportation sector and locally. Because I, I, I agree with you, that's an important thing. Kelly. So um, I have a question and a couple, I guess, suggestions and comments. Um, as this is now, will we get a report of how much offsets have occurred from this program at our airport? After the first year, uh, we will. They are able to report uh, by airport. I will say at other partner airports, the uptake has been low, but we're hoping through sure. good marketing and such will be better here. And then two, I guess, suggestions I would have um, would be maybe we could consider the, something similar for this for um, vehicle miles offset that could line up with annual registrations out of the clerk's office for um, motor vehicle where you could offset your vehicle miles traveled over the last year. And then a topic um, for Rocky Mountain Institute. Yeah, just to see how to expand the mm -hmm. program. I, some, I know just some of the problems with that is I think those renewal forms come out of the state. Right. So they're not being mailed directly from the county. So there'd be a little bit of, again, it'd have to be people coming in or doing it online to have a prompt to opt in. Um, and then there was a new study that was report that was published in Science this week that looked at um, tree planting for carbon offsets and um, kind of estimated that 
with the available land not currently used, two-thirds of carbon produced could be offset through tree planting projects, and it provides um, maps, so where you could actually look at the U.S. and calculations for where in the U.S. types of forests could be planted and the amount of offsets could be used. So that might be a helpful tool if we're looking at localized projects. And that's, um, that's part of what Rocky Mount, there is one project right now in Colorado, and it actually is a um, carbon sink and, and grasslands on the, yeah. on the east. Yeah. yeah. So, so I just would refer yeah, to that that'll... tool that's just been published. Okay. Yeah. Patty? You know, I, um, in thinking about what George was, that was going to be my question, you know, we always talk at the black hole when we get monies that come through, say, maroon bells, and we, they were all going to D.C. into the <coughs> black hole in D.C. Um, the general it, fund. It, yeah, and, and skier, skier, you know, the skier dollars and all that. We're, we've been trying to bring those back to where they originate. Um, I think that would be great. I, I would like to look at, since they're coming off of the airport, I would like to look at if there's any opportunity or possibility to do a continued fund growing. I think George has some ideas with CORE, but this would be really specific to the airport as far as the new cement being carbon, sequest a carbon sequester? Se Sequestering. Yeah. Sequestration. Cement. Um, and I know there's a cost related to that, but that would be huge for our airport. And I think this would be a perfect place for these dollars to maybe be going to since they're coming from transportation issues coming off of our airport. So I'd like that to be kind of kept in the thinking process at some point. Yeah, and like I said, what this really does is it gives us a seat at the table yeah. to identify. We'd have to go through a process to become a certified offset because the investments wouldn't just be coming from our airport. Right, right. right. It'd be um, from from others. Uh, It'd be great if we could, if, if, if uh, it's a new pro project, a new program, as it's evolving, if, I mean, because the people might be more more likely even to contribute if they know it's coming back to their home airport. Totally agree. And I yeah. think marketing it is huge. I'm actually traveling and I'm going to go on and I'm going to offset my miles. You know, I, I this year, um, I decided just to buy offsets for my friends who I knew were traveling. So you can you can do it as a gift. And I actually proposed that to RMI that they have something on there where you can gift an offset very easily. It's, it's so simple. You just plug in where they're going, buy the offset, and say, hey, I did this. It'd be great if there was an acknowledgment so you could send them a email or something or a certificate that <coughs> said, you know, Merry Christmas. I bought you a carbon offset. <laughs> Big deal. <laughs> you know, instead of some piece of junk that you didn't want anyway, you know, it, some people like to have to do something for someone. Uh, gifting an offset actually makes a lot of sense. Um, so I'd love <laughs> to see it expanded for that. So you don't have to only buy your own, but you could pick up your friends or your families or whatever. Um, and and I love the idea of, of pushing it beyond just air travel. Good travel is just air travel. Um, but yes, vehicular travel on the highway. Uh, I think we could be having conversations about a, 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 it's really a carbon fee right. is what we're charging. And how the, the money gets spent is a, an interesting question. And there's a big conversation nationally about fee and dividend. Uh, where a carbon fee is charged and the money gets sent back to everybody, uh, in every citizen of the country gets a, a, a check, so to speak, the dividend from it. That's um, what Canada is doing. Right, and, and it's possible. Uh, could we do that locally? Could we have a carbon fee and dividend here? I know city market charges tax, and then there's a tax refund from the city every year. It might be something similar to that. I, I'd like to explore all those those things. And finally, on this... I think we could also reach out to special events. People come in and have an event, a big mm. uh, deal here, whether it's the X Games or food and wine or the weekend. I've been working on the weekend guys who would do that event in the fall. Uh, why can't we ask them to offset their carbon? And those are the yeah. conversations we'll be having with our partner entities like Chambers and – Right. Yeah. Right. Thank Absolutely. you. Absolutely. There's, there's a lot of – opportunity here and as long as we can convince everybody that the money is being spent effectively and for the right purposes I'd love to see uh, the capability in the terminal of that people could go to a kiosk or there's a computer they could do their transaction right there at the airport either after they get off the airplane in the baggage area 
and I never did like the ads that were putting up on the, you know, the big ads on the wall there. I'd rather have a um, be pushing the Good Traveler program and have it have people realize that here's something that they could do right now for a few dollars they could offset their carbon for the flight that they just took to get to Aspen yeah. or if they're in the departure area that they could do it do it there or even in the the secure waiting area we might have three different places where they could plug into this we had talked about that a little bit and we can we can revisit it or the conclusion we came to is almost everyone has a personal device that accesses Wi-Fi, and we thought with that automatic redirect that almost probably gets to, to folks a little bit quicker. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But we could look at a kiosk uh, also. Or at least the, the advertisements so they know to look at their phone. Yeah. Well, I was just thinking, you know, the advertisements at the airport, however we feel about them, they're a revenue source that's they're, significant. Mm -hmm. But I'm wondering if we can't work with those, with the advertiser, the main advertiser, to actually run one of these mm -hmm. on those big boards or screens. Yeah, we can. Uh, and they, they do. They have breaks sometimes in their advertising. Where I bet they'd they be more than us, willing so. to come to the table on that and give us some free space. Like maybe get a, a realtor to put this up instead of no, the face. No, the main company that does all those ads, they could run... Because I know they do some things for other, like nonprofit for type. PSAs or something. Yeah, and that would be perfect. You've probably thought about a lot of these things. Yeah, Pat. Pat's got a pretty good plan together. We we each year we do a major advertising push for the airport, and this is going to be the topic this year. Right. So I, I would just ask that it be provocative. Let's make it. Let's get some attention for this thing. You know, let's make it. Well, we always Unavoidable. try that with advertising. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay, good. <laughs> All right, the uh, last thing that that um, I had for you, and uh, Steve and Kelly, you may have already gotten this, but um, Business Licensing Authority um, is being introduced. They're thinking that there could be a committee hearing as early as January, next Monday, Monday. Uh, January Monday. 13th. Yeah. Um, I do have some fact sheets and a write-up here if, if anyone uh, wants that. We, when I say we, I, I wrote that up at the board's direction, and I did commit that we would have commissioners available for testimony. So I'm hoping um, that we do, but I just wanted to put that on the radar screen. Um, Kelly and Steve, I don't know. You guys have been taking lead through CCI, but I wanted to make sure that um, it was likely one of you would be able to go, or if we needed to talk to, to other board members, maybe about this testifying. This is Monday the 13th. Yeah, it's yeah. Really yeah. Well, it's not a definite yet. They're saying it's as early as Monday the 13th. Which early could mean it spills over to no. the next yeah. day. A, a couple of thoughts. The, our weekly meeting with you was moved from Friday to Monday afternoon because you were having a, a staff meeting oh, on, retreat on today, Friday yeah. afternoon. Um, I so that's just one thought. I, I mean, I would love to be able to go down there on Monday if if necessary. I know Thomas Davidson said he'd be able to go, mm -hmm. but it's sort of a last minute thing if it's actually going to have the committee hearing that yeah, day. We don't know. It might be just that morning, all of a sudden, you realize I have to go to Denver quickly. Um, and also, um, Julie McCluskey asked me specifically um, to be able to participate in the committee hearings as much as possible. Should at least have, not me specifically, but have Picking County be be present and be, be willing to have commissioners there at the hearings. Because it is really a, sort of ours and Summit County are really the two counties really pushing it, I think, more than any others. So it sounds like you, one of you would be available, or yeah, I can, uh, I'm gonna, uh, I, I'm happy to try to go. I just yeah. need to firm up like child care logistics. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So we'll, as we get more information, and just so that one, the board to be aware, that's uh, that's actually a big win that this is yeah. getting introduced. We all introduced got the email, and, I think, from yeah. Right. So mm -hmm. happy right. to hear. And John Ely's been very hands-on in the bill drafting, so hopefully no surprises mm -hmm. in the future. Perfect. But, um, 
At least as it's introduced. Um, and I, I think I'm available to do it as an alternate if for okay. some reason you can't go or you need or maybe I want more. more more the merrier. Maybe I can do it. But <laughs> I want to double check my calendar before. But so John, I'm, before you I'm, step I'm down, though, is that okay, Steve? And then you and John can can hold your yeah. meeting and I'll bow out and of it that. It might be good for me since I'll be the new chair That's to right. to not miss the meeting with <laughs> and John. then Greg and I. Wait a minute! Wait a minute! We're not ready to talk about this yet. <laughs> also, I mean, there will be a lot more opportunities because it doesn't just go through one committee yeah. there might be three or four opportunities to go to a committee hearing uh, as it goes through the house and the senate so we could all have a chance right. <laughs> we could also get stuck in denver waiting for them to actually bring it forward too. <laughs> done, had done that too so can i change to a different because before john because i know we have we're going to talk about this housing thing but um, the NACO dues, I guess it's like 400 and some dollars a uh, year. $450 a year for the NACO dues. I think dues. we're okay. I'm okay with that. Um, as far as the D.C. meeting, though, the legislative meeting, is there anybody? We need, I think, if we're going to, I think we need to see if we, how involved we want to be mm -hmm. rather than just getting those little newspaper things. I think we should Thanks step up to the that plate. Up. I, was, I was wondering that. Yeah, because I know, Steve, you're going to be back this? in D.C.? No, I'm going to be was. in Savannah, Georgia. Oh not in dc at that time because i i'm willing to go if nobody wants to go i've talked with a commissioner from um she's out of fairfax virginia um, i worked with her with the national association of regional councils of government um and she said she'd be happy to show me around so i wasn't like uh, you know lost in the shuffle but but it's really up to the board so i think that's something we need to talk about to make plans it's the Agreed end of February 1st it, you actually really need to go just the first of the week you don't need to go over the weekend because that's when all the yeah and so um, one of the strengths that Colorado typically brings is there's good coordination actually through CCI um, for the the NACO uh, conference and we tend to as a state try and identify areas where we can vote at NACO as a block because uh, individual right. members uh, get to vote. And Colorado's been pretty effective because uh, we're a smaller state, obviously, but um, has been pretty effective and influential because we've managed to, to vote as, as that kind of block where we've reached agreement. Obviously, we haven't reached agreement. Well, there's a lot everything. of stuff that happens with the rural caucus. And but, stuff. yeah, in order to have the vote and such, you got to show up. Um, so there is an argument, I think, for for participating in that, and you know that it does give us a, a voice. I think, um, Patty, if you were to go, it'd probably be good to coordinate with our CCI reps if there's been any. Yeah. If if uh, it's there, unless there's somebody else who's. And I assume CCI is still coordinating on NACO the way they have in the past. I I haven't stayed that close to it. I can't. I haven't paid that much attention. Okay. So I guess the it? question is, do we want to send a representative yeah. to, to NACO? And yeah. Patty's, I think, raising her hand and volunteering. Well, I can go. I mean, I'm, I'm able to go, and I've got the connection back there, But and I can work with CCI to rally and with mm -hmm. um, Eagle and – I think Eagle and Summit usually attend all of these NACO events. So, But it, it just depends if the board feels it's worth the time and energy. I'm willing to put that in. Or if somebody else really is like dying to do it, I just wanted to ask the same question: Is it is it worth it? Um, and I don't always hear that it is. So I'm, uh, I know. I, I think what would be helpful for me is to understand what our, our federal legislative policy from the Pitkin County view would be. And I know you guys bring more history to that than I do. So well, I think that would be something you could that. garner from going back there and learning what the issues are, and then bring it back to this table. And say, okay, this is what was learned, and this is what might affect us. This is what's, yeah. you know, not going to go anywhere. But why don't we reach out to CCI and see if there's been any kind of Colorado platform developed through CCI? That may be a good place Perfect. for you guys to start, and then and we can worry about the logistics later. Right. And is this the one Rachel went to on a regular basis? She used to go to all of them. Yeah. Um, yeah. I I'd be great to hear what her perspective is on that. She clearly thought it was worthwhile. Um, mm -hmm. But it'd be nice to explore I've already explore made that. an effort to reach out to her to find out if she thinks it's beneficial. Okay. Well, when we get the platform and then we can okay. bring that back, is that great? Be enough time. Yeah. Playing oh, yeah. That'd be great. Okay. Uh, George. No. You okay. want to go, George? One other thought is um, <laughs> the co the committees on different 
topics are really a good way that we could potentially participate. And you don't even, a lot of those I think are phone meetings. They're You've not been doing that on climate. ones you have to be there in person. And right. so if we do continue participating in NACO, maybe we should all look and see if there's a committee that we'd be interested in and working on. And so that, that would give us a presence at the table, at least on the phone calls. I think the key one's always been public lands, but I know right. Greg's been participating in some of the conference I've been, calls. I've been listening in the calls. It's the Environment, Energy, and Land Use uh, Committee. Um, and uh, and often it just, uh, it's, it's kind of a surprise. It's interesting to hear, to listen to them, but I find that I think we'd be in an, the, the minority in just really? about every, everything <laughs> that comes along. It's pretty amazing to hear what they're talking about. Yeah, you're dominated by rural counties, which tend to be maybe less progressive than urban areas, which are fewer counties. And I have one more really quick thing. I don't know if anybody else received an email on Christmas Day from a gentleman who would like us to consider grooming Smuggler Mountain Road. Right, I did get that. Um, I will pass it on to John and pass it to Brian Pettit. And I have not gotten back to this gentleman um, couldn't believe Christmas It'd Day. It'd probably be an open space, actually, kind of. Yeah. That's a I, county road. I guess it's a county road, yeah. <coughs> it's access open space, yeah. yeah. I mean, I, I would not support that. So. Well, yeah, but I just didn't know how we wanted to address it with the gentleman that took the time to contact so, us. I, thank you for your input. And right. I think that would be fine. Okay, yeah. I will get back to him. Okay, thank you. Uh, all right, anything else? Other hand up? Was there a hand up over here? No? Uh, Just holding my head up. Oh, head up. <laughs> right. <laughs> We've got one more item, Greg. We've got one more on there, okay. The, um, just a follow-up um, on the unit at Hunter Creek. That was the subject right. of a um, land use request. I'll let you guys take that one. Hello, happy new year. Okay, Phyllis Matthias, Deputy County Manager with Ryan Ely, um, Assistant County Attorney, and Leslie Lamont. Come on, Les. Come on, Leslie, come on down. Senior we want, planner. Oh she sat at the table so we're dragging she doesn't here. want to. And she started this uh, uh, before the holidays. You all approved a, um, I guess it's an exchange of an affordable housing unit. Um, and what's being received is a Hunter Creek three bedroom. At that meeting, you asked for uh, options of how we could use that unit. Would it be a county unit? Should a fund um, purchase it? And we looked at all the options. Um, the intent for this is really to be sold as an affordable housing unit. It is a Category 3, so some information on the Category 3 is it has a, it needs three people in it since it's a three bedroom. A maximum income is 121000 The sales price is 248000 It does have a monthly HOA fee of $851, which supports the swimming pool, the tennis court, snow removal, um, trash. trash. That's monthly, not quarterly? It's monthly. High. How much monthly? Eight hundred and fifty-one dollars. It's, it's the only uh, it's the only affordable unit in that part of the in that particular building. Right, they're all um, just free market. Grounds maintenance management of the property. Um, so at this point, our recommendation um, is it a, to leave it a for sale unit. Um, you asked about for county employees. So checking with APSHA, the <coughs> county employee could be made as a first priority. Um, so within the county, the, the APSHA system, they have a priority system. So the first priority would be a, an individual working for Pickin County who meets the requirements of being a Category 3 and has a three-person household. Um, if there were no county employees that w um, went into um, to, to bid for the property, it would go then go to the general population, but it would always be a first priority Pickin County employee. As it yeah. moved on in years. As it moved sales. on in years. The first priority was, would always be a county employee. Um, if there were five county employees that bid on it, it would go through the same lottery system that APSHA uses with terms of uh, employment, how long, um, and then household. So looking at that, that's a simple way to turn this um, 
to use this to be able to have an advantage for a county employee, uh, which we are having difficulties in housing. It's a great place to live. Uh, when you look at the, the total, even with the $851 um, HOA fee, the monthly fee, um, a $248,000 purchase price uh, still makes it with that $121,000 income a doable uh, affordable cost. And to give you a ballpark on that, you're probably um, combined with a um, mortgage and um, insurance and the um, homeowner's fee, you're looking at somewhere in the neighborhood of probably 2100 to $2,200 a month, um, which puts you at a household income of eighty-five dollars to $90,000 if you want to stay at that roughly 30% of gross income. So we were a little taken back when we heard the HOA fees. When we went back and did the numbers, is like, oh, this fits actually really nicely within that Category 3 affordability because of the purchase price. So I think it's perfect. That's our recommendation. Uh, Rye had some information on how to make it. Um, you also asked for the deed restriction to run to the benefit of the county. Yeah, so I just wanted to follow up on a couple of the requests that <coughs> you all had. Uh, making the deed restriction run to the county's not a problem. It's really similar to what you all did with the Salt Vista. Um, priority for the county employees in there. Uh, Patty you specifically asked about the opportunity to purchase the property during subsequent transactions. And <clears throat> that is something I included in the deed restriction. But what I did is provide the opportunity for the county to purchase it with the intent then being of retransacting it as a qualified um, to a qualified buyer in Keep the category in three. But what that would allow is at each opportunity to purchase it, the county could buy it and then basically do things if we wanted to uh, fix the unit or change the terms of the deed restriction or things like that. It would basically be an intermediary purchaser so that we could have a little bit more flexibility moving forward if we wanted to. Um, and I guess theoretically we could, uh, no, actually the way it's structured, I think it, the intent is best left that we then transact it again to another qualified. To a group. sale, not a rental. A sale. I mean, we could potentially use it uh, as a rental, and I guess that discussion could be had at the time because we would have the opportunity to modify the terms of the deed restriction. So. Yeah, my, my intent in that was to just make sure the county was still really hands-on with this unit because it came out of a land use action. Yeah. So I wanted to make sure we didn't lose that. But I'm comfortable with moving forward with the, with how you've presented it. I think it resolves the issues and gets us what we wanted and what we actually would be more beneficial having this unit there. Okay, well, as you know, um, when you did the land use approval, I think we gave the applicant a January 15th date to let them know what was going on with that. Um, sorry, go ahead. No, that's okay. Are you finished? Yes. January fifteenth. So we need to we need to have this sorted out for them by the before then. Yeah, I would. Right. The intent, well, based like on today. the direction <laughs> you give me today, and Leslie would let the applicant know the right. direction that we want to take. So Kelly, um, what is the risk to an owner on a high increase in their HOA or a, a capital assessment? assessment? I think that risk is there, but um, with if someone wanted to sell it, then that with the um, provision that Rye's talking about, the county could actually buy it back then, mm -hmm. and we would so that kind of protects the county, and also would allow whoever owns it to just say, "I want to sell it and get out." And do you know? I don't know how the HOAs are formed over there. Is there is that HOA in good health? Is there mm -hmm. a capital fund that is? Um, that 851 monthly also provides for a contingency. They do have a special assessment that I understand is being assessed this coming year, which is close to $2,000 for spa repairs and pool repairs. And I can't remember the other things that he told me what they are, but they're in three different payment installments. So um, that's something that's going on there. And the roof um, and the big things are 
so at least look, they're taking care of that. I think what Kelly's asking is, right. what, are the, what are the surprises going to be? Have the reserve you, right. Yeah, and do they have and, a good fund balance? And so <coughs> and that's what I've been able to find out from the realtor, from Justin. Yeah, and assuming they're in compliance with either Kiowa or the Condominium Ownership Act, they should have a certain amount of capital refer reserves maintained in the event something were to take place. But I guess if there is a major, major issue, like they needed to repair all the roofs in the building, you know, I think one way they could do that so that it wouldn't have a major impact through a huge special assessment would be to, um, you know, to get a un borrow against the property mm -hmm. and build in a 10, 15 year time period to to pay that so it's not such a massive so we did. flux at one time. Mm -hmm. It's a lot of how that infrastructure work is done. Mm -hmm. So, okay. how many cases do we have where we have a, a a single affordable unit in a in a building or a community of free market units? And I'm, I'm <coughs> oh, have we, this is, it's got to have happened before. Uh, the it, precedents. APSHA does have some. Um, APSHA supported this purchase. So that's where I, um, I would default to their opinion, um, where they, uh, I know Cindy also visited the unit and felt that it was acceptable to accept. Um, and, uh, and I would guess that the HOA and how it's run, um, because they have had units, single units in a free market complex where they have let them go back to the free market because it was not uh, sustainable that right. the, the cost that the HOA was deciding on, um, as well as how the structure is and how that one unit gets to vote. I know that that's been something that they've been working um, to rectify when there have been uh, negative consequence situations. So the, the, the owner in this case will have the option. We have the opt-out where at least the, the county would consider buying it back in case, say, the fees go up so dramatically for the free market units that, that this person just says, I can't do this, I need out. Mm -hmm. We're not gonna guarantee purchasing it from them, but we have the option to purchase it. And I have right. a question so though, if the, if the monthly fees went up significantly, would that then change that cap on the income of 120 something thousand? Would that be brought into the picture so somebody who could move, well that's the only way somebody could then move in and afford it, because if they're having to pay $1,800 a month, in HOA dues, they'd have to have more income. Yeah, at, <laughs> at that point, Patty, it. we'd either need to look at that or we'd need to look at um, selling the property, bringing those funds back into our housing fund we and reinvesting And we would be able to do that? After five years, I think. Okay. <clears throat> yeah, I think that's a good thing. And as far as units, free market or uh, affordable housing units within free market complexes, we've learned lessons and we, we really look at that carefully. And um, a lot of those free market complexes now no longer allow you to buy an affordable housing unit within their complex. They have their right. homeowners guidelines, their homeowners rules and regs um, do not allow that. Right. So we've lost some opportunities there too at the same time. The bar will be made aware of all this, I'm sure. <laughs> it's and, a great and place and to live. And does support, when I spoke with um, Cindy, the, the county employee priority. Um, that fits in their system really well. There's not an additional um, administrative burden on them being able to do that because we're using all the same processes that they currently have, just there's one other priority. It, it and we sounds would market like that, that to our employees. And, and APSHA would too, and it would identify. I mean, anyone could bid on it and be in a second priority in case there were no county employees, uh, but we would also um, announce it to uh, our employees right. just to make sure they knew. Perfect. Okay. Uh, anything else on this? Thank you. It looks, yeah. Sounds Thanks good to me. Details. You need nods, heads, thumbs up. Would, I have a question though oh. on that. So, would a, a potential county employee then be able to participate in the county loan program that would then uh, give us an interest in the property? No, that's not possible with a deed restricted. Because when we do the loan program, we are deed restricting a uh, free market property. This is already a deed restricted. Okay. So this oh, wouldn't qualify question. for that. But they would be able to qualify for chaffas, right? There's a... Uh, for other, yeah, if they're a first-time buyer or others. Right, yeah. exactly. 
And if you may, I, if you recall, uh, Chris Benden, who's the applicant's representative, he said they they looked far and wide for a unit that um, met APSHA's qualifications, and they've already upgraded the unit uh, per uh, Cindy and APSHA's directions on this. So to make it acceptable, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so it's a good unit. And we ended up with a little bit of a windfall on it, I think like $34,000, um, right. primarily because it was so difficult for the applicant <coughs> to find an acceptable unit. Right, right. And then they waived that. <coughs> yeah, they agreed to let that right. go. So, okay. um, all in all, it's 37. 37, 000. sorry. <laughs> Get that extra 3000 right. Thank you. Okay, I think you've got four head nods. Okay. Thank you. Good. Thanks, Thanks a lot. Thanks, Thanks for coming in. Thank you. And I think that's uh, is nothing else. We are done. We're at our grassroots. Me. Thank you. We're done. You fighting me. Thank you.